good afternoon to the uh, citizens of America. I'm sorry I couldn't be on this Arctic tour, which I had very much looked forward to going on. Uh, but due to some personal health issues, I am here in my Arctic home. So I welcome you into my Arctic home today. As you're most, most of you have been hearing about the challenges that we face in the Arctic in terms of global warming and climate change. In fact, in the Arctic, we are being the most negatively disproportionately impacted by climate changes. We are a people who live uh, on the ice and snow. We depend upon the cold, the ice and snow, and nowhere else in the world does the ice and snow represent mobility and transportation. We are constantly out hunting, very connected to our way of life. And our hunting culture, in fact, is being negatively impacted by climate change and very much by the inaction of your own uh, country of the United States not to sign on to Kyoto, the, the Kyoto Protocol, for example, the only international instrument that exists in the world to start to lower greenhouse gas emissions. So it's very important what is happening in the Arctic because it has great significance to the rest of the world and very important that America get on the right track to address this issue. We are a people, as I say, that are very dependent upon the ice, the cold, and the snow as we go out and we hunt into our environment here, which we call our supermarket. But it's not just about the killing of animals. It's not just about the, the actual technical aspects of a hunt. It's about the training ground for our young people and the natural way in which the wisdom of the land and the rhythms and the cycles of nature teach our young people for preparation for survival on the land, but also these skills are transferable to the modern world. That we teach them how to be patient on the land. They, they, they learn that automatically. They are taught sound judgment, how not to be impulsive, how to be patient and courageous. All of these skills that are so required to survive the land, but certainly for a culture that's transitioning into the modern world, they are also a great requirement. And so this isn't just about the melting of ice or the depletion of the ice. It isn't just about the possible extinctions of animals in the future here. It's about an entire people that are trying to make it in this new world order of modernization, of globalization that affords us our rightful place and respect. And so it's important for the world to understand these connections that climate change isn't just about greenhouse gases or or technology or politics. It's about a people, a human face to all of this, and that's what I have been trying to put uh, to America in particular. Now, the citizens of America, in my opinion and in my experience of working with you, are far ahead of their own government, and that is hopeful, and I am glad that this is happening. So um, I wish for you, uh, or, or the wish for us, is to keep making that connection happen in terms of understanding that we are all one, that we are a shared humanity, and we all have a responsibility to one another, and that the depletion of the sea ice in the Arctic is very connected to the economic and environmental policies of America. And so with that, um, I would like to, be, to add as well, though, that as I was growing up as a child, um, America had its place here in the Arctic. I know that not just in where I was born in Nunavik, but here in Nunavut, uh, America has a soft spot, spot in our hearts as a result of the times of great uh, famine and starvation when America arrived during the Second World War to uh, build airstrips, bringing with them jobs and, and supplies and, and all of what we required at the time when most of our own governments had neglected us and had forgotten about us. And so we remember those times when America came in in a very big way for us. And we, we continue to say today, come back, America. We need your leadership in climate change. We need your leadership all around. And the Arctic needs you, and the planet needs you. And so we ask for America to come back to take this kind of strong leadership to address these issues. And again, I wish I had been with you, but um, I welcome you in my home. And there will be other times where we will definitely connect and continue to work on these very, very important issues 
of global warming and climate change and how the Arctic connects to all of you and how if we protect the Arctic, we save the planet. Michael Meek.